here at the Curator's Corner with a special installment of Curator's Corner. I'm here with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator of the National Farms Museum. And Phil, people are just seeing this for the first one. This is our second installment, actually, of our special Phil Noir Month, all of November. Very exciting stuff. First, Phil, tell us a little bit about what Film Noir is and why we're doing this. John, Film Noir is the... Uh the classic American film genre of uh, of detective, uh, you know, movies. Uh, you know, before World War II, we had the great uh, comedy detectives: Philo Vance, Nick and Nora Charles, uh, you know, Fu Manchu and uh, Mr. Moto, and uh, those great uh, detectives. But uh, World War II came along; things got a little dark. And the French gave it a name: Film Noir, the Black Film. And so you start to have a great deal of, uh, you know, unspoken sex, you know, involved. Uh, you get the, you introduced to a, a mall, you know, uh, you hear the word gams, and all these great lines that Chandler and Hammett came up with, uh, Mickey Splain. And uh, these darker films, uh, you know, showed an a, a American film in a different light. It generally begins with the uh, Maltese Falcon and 1941 and runs through uh, Touch of Evil with her own Charlton Heston and Orson Welles in the late 1950s. So we're featuring firearms from that period and tell us another classic here, what you have this week, Phil. John, uh, there's hardly a, 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 a film noir made where you won't see at least one 1903 Colt uh, pocket. Uh, it is literally the classic pocket gun. And, and to this day, I honestly believe that this John Browning uh, designed semi-automatic is the uh, the ultimate carry piece. Uh, you notice that it is uh, it, it's very thin. Uh, there's not a lot uh, sticking out the sides of the gun. There is no hammer, concealed hammer to this. Uh, very simple, uh, you know, uh, you know, safety lock here. Uh, 32 round ACP. It's enough to get the job done at the close range it was designed for slides in and out of your pocket, uh, rounded front sight, nothing to get caught on your pocket on the, in, in or on the way out. So as you're drawing it out from your holster that's in your suit, that'll come right out and not a problem at all. You never notice in the movies these guys <laughs> always had a, a holster. Have you ever tried to carry one of these things in a pocket like that? I don't. Yeah. They, they made, Phil, they made it so effortless. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, they, and, they, and, and as we said before, some of the, said some of the films with Bogart, you never even saw him with, with, with a pistol, but you knew he always had one and he could get it like that if he needed it. You know, in, in Maltese Falcon, he takes Wilmer's, you know, the little gunsel of uh, Sin, Sidney Gutton. Uh, he takes his 245s off this guy and he's like five foot five inches tall and weighs 100 pounds <laughs> and he's carrying two 1911s. And, uh, and you don't see them until they come out of his coat. Uh, but this uh, is easy to carry concealed. And uh, uh, it was uh, in the model 1903 is in 32 caliber. Uh, about 600,000 of those were made from 1903 until uh, 1946. And then 1908 came out, uh, and the gun was in uh, 380. Right. Uh, so uh, there's the 03 and the 08. They're almost side by side, identical. Another neat feature of this gun uh, during the same time period, during World War II is that you'll find some both blue and parker eyes that are marked U.S. property. Oh. And those were guns that were either general officers' pistols issued to, uh, to general officers as, a, as a, a keepsake, or they were guns issued to the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services. Yep. And of course, there were a great number of films about Wild Bill Donovan and the OSS in World War II that these fall into. The predecessor to the CIA. That's right. And, and, and now tell us, uh, once again, what films we'd see this a farm like this in? Oh, any of, any of the Dashiell Hammett uh, movies, uh, Falcon, Raymond Chandler's The Big Sleep, uh, you know, Double Indemnity, uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, of all the great, the great classic films uh, that, that you'll find in the, the 1903. And tell us where people can actually see this then if they want to see it here at the National Firearms Museum. Well, well we've got... Not here at the National Firearms Museum, but near us at the National Firearms right. We're in a secret location for this <laughs> yeah. one until today. And uh, you can uh, see this in, in 2,500 other firearms on exhibit seven days a week at the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia. And uh, that's right off the interstate at uh, 
Route C the intersection of Route 66 and Route 50, open seven days a week from 9.30 to 5 until 7 on Saturdays. And if you can't make it out to Fairfax, come by and visit us uh, on the web at nationalfirearmsmuseum.org. Now, so, uh, Phil, here in, in your special, your special, you know, film noir office here, you have some lovely things on here, including uh, this falcon. So, so what is it? It's the, uh, it's the stuff dreams are made of. Phil, thank you for another exciting segment of Phil Noir Month on The Curator's Corner. Here's looking at you, kid.